Hello everybody, welcome back to Algotalk. I'm again with David from Second Thread on YouTube and we will talk about problem from Facebook Hacker Cup Round 3 Railroad, railroad Renovations which I think you David tested, right? You, you knew this problem before the competition. I mm. did, yeah. Mm. I also wasn't allowed to compete, obviously. <laughs> but it would be then, would you say it's a difficult problem, easy one? Well, as far as like round three goes, I think it was easier of the four, but um, just like in absolute terms, I wouldn't say it was easy for sure. Like when I first read it, I had to think about it for quite a bit before coming to a solution. Okay, let's see the statement. For me, already a difficult part was to understand the statement. Uh, we have some events being, there is a road, let's say from zero to L. We only care about integer points of that road. And events are that some interval is renovated. It's now new and you can recognize that. Those intervals cannot overlap. Maybe now there is this one. Endpoints are integers. And there is some guy traveling from time to time. And there are also events of type at some moment he is somewhere. At moment, let's say t equal to 5. And he sees whether this uh, this place is renovated or not, whether it already belongs to a blue segment. So maybe he sees that at moment 5, this is uh, by maybe 1, I will denote that uh, by a point and time and type. I denote 1 means this is renovated, this part should be blue at this moment, and maybe here at time t equal 3, here should be 0, means not renovated. And later we see that oh, at t equal to 7, this is 0. And this means that situation I drew with blue intervals is impossible. Because this blue interval, if this is 1, so at already at moment 5, our guy saw that here we have blue interval, but later at moment 7, it's not blue, then something is wrong, but we can fix it. Uh, here we can just say that this is the situation. And this was built, let's say, at moment 4. And this was, say, this on the right was built at any moment, I don't know, 10. Uh, do you agree so far? Did I mess up anything? And No, that sounds like a correct version of the statement. So basically, like, uh, there's some railroad, and then you're going to set ranges of the railroad to one, but no two ranges will ever overlap. No. And then you have different events where, like, you remember at this time, uh, this position was either a zero or a one. Oh, I didn't even think about it. Maybe it's better to just say that initially there is a sequence of zeros, and from time to time an interval is turned into ones. It, it, all of that needed to be zeros a moment ago. Now it all will be ones, and there are additionally things like, we know that at moment t equal to 5, this was a 1. By, for the whole time I thought about this uh, geometrical representation from the statement. Now, given those red informations, uh, at every moment what was there, we need to find the minimum number of blue intervals possible to satisfy that. We don't know when something blue was built. Uh, we just know red, and additionally, there is k, up to n, where n is the number of red moments, and k means that k red moments we can reorder. We can put it in some different position. Those red moments are numbered from 1 to n, and it just means so each of k times we can do something like uh, moment 3, move it to moment 7 or something like that, just reorder it a little bit. But it's almost like skipping that event, I would say. We will see that in a moment. Okay. <laughs> now, should we start? So just to quickly, to quickly cover what the question's asking. The question is like, if you can move at the time of at most k of them, what's the fewest number of blue segments you need in order for it to be consistent? Yes. We need to minimize blue after reordering red a little bit because red is in the input along with value k. Oof. Should we start from solving this if k is zero or should we say what it means actually to reorder and do some observations about it? 
Well, funnily enough, when I first read the problem, I just forgot about K. <laughs> so my first solution was solving when K equals zero. And then I got to the input section. I'm like, oh, wait, the solution doesn't work at all. I missed a huge part of the problem. But yeah, I think solving it when K equals zero is okay. interesting and also helpful to understanding the full solution. I started from analyzing what it actually means to to move to some other position. And K, can I just... Uh, is it enough to move to the beginning, for example? That was my first idea. But yeah, uh, let's do k equal to zero. And for me, it wasn't obvious at all in what order I should go for the input because uh, with I will get back here. This is up to 500 or so. And when you see such a low constraint, it almost always means dynamic programming. Uh, this problem screams dynamic programming, but what do you do? I can put a lot of things here like dp of position, maybe left position and right, because maybe this is interval. I can also put the number of blue intervals. I can also put, what can I put? Uh, any other ideas? Well, you can put k. You can put oh. what? I mean, there are several things, I guess, yeah. Yeah, so also k if k is non-zero, like, a lot of things. Uh, what did you do at this moment of the problem? What was your first thought? You, you thought about the sequence of zeros, right? Yeah, I first turned it into an array because I thought that was easier to think about. Mm -hmm. okay, so we have this and we have information like at the moment t equal to uh, 1, this is 0. At the moment t equal to 2, this is 1. At the moment t equal to 3, this is 1. What do we do with this? So I think it, it should be pretty obvious that if you ever have the same position that goes from a 1 to a 0, then okay. you're in trouble. Because the only operation you can do is set a range of zeros into 1s. Okay. So if you ever have like at moment 2, it's a 1, or moment 3, it's a 1, moment 7, it's a 0, then like you have an issue because that's never even allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can instantly remove all of those cases. And but I then, think then we terminate saying impossible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then, like, if that's not the case, if you know it's zero for a bunch of different times, and then you know it's one for a bunch of different times, if k equals zero, that means all of the, like, you can't change anything. Mm -hmm. So all that really matters in that case is the last zero and then the first one. Okay. Uh, this just means that at moment three, if this was one, and at moment seven, this was one, we can just forget about the latter. We know that this is the first moment we saw that this is one. Yeah. And maybe yeah, it... Yeah, so then... Mm -hmm. What then? Uh, from that point, I thought about maybe, like, it did scream DP to me, like you said. So I thought maybe what sort of things could we put in our DP state in order to try and minimize the number of ranges here? Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember one more thing I tried to put in DP, the time. Uh, that maybe we go from moment one and we keep deciding about new intervals to add because it seems natural in this problem they told us that something happens in time and then it's hard not to put time in dp but then if at moment one i build some blue intervals i put i change this to once and this to once how do i remember that in dp state i cannot that's too much information to handle so I think it might be helpful if we're just assuming k equals zero. Mm -hmm. We might want to do like a process things from left to right order, because we know that um, you never have two ranges that intersect. So if we ever have some range, all that matters at that position, if we're going from left to right, is like which position we're at, and then what time that this range was set from zero to one. Okay. So uh, we already, let's say that because we go from left to right, let's say that we are now here. And this means we already decided everything about the prefix. We cannot think about it. And here, for sure, what I did is I iterated over if interval starts here, where does it end? Maybe here, maybe here, somewhere. Now I'm looking oh, at okay. this interval of ones. Uh, or did you just kind of maintained the interval you said that there is some interval going on here i will build some time and i will continue that's your solution yeah i did like an n squared state sort of okay. thing so you have but i, I think, think dp of position well. and time 
Uh, yeah, where time is like the time that it was set to one. Okay. Yeah. Then I instead have DP of position, but uh, the complexity will be the same because while you just move to the next element, I guess from this you will move to position plus one. I iterate over any position in the future. Uh, this at this moment we have two possible paths because I'm more familiar with mine. I will describe this one. But complexity okay. is the same, so whatever. Uh, space complexity maybe is a bit different, but then again, here you can optimize this. Yeah, what I did is I now mm, say this. If I have my sequence and I consider this interval to be the case, I just need to know all about this interval. That somewhere at moment three, there was zero here. At moment equals seven, there was one. From this, I already know that interval blue, blue interval must be built between moments three and seven. If additionally, some there there might be some contradiction, like that already before there was one, that that's now I don't allow this blue interval. But if everything is consistent, like this, then I allow this I allow this blue interval to happen. And, that's and you just need to keep track of that with like a range max and then a range min, which you can like store yes. as you increase your transition. Mm -hmm. I, I think I did all of that in some brute force way. So for now I have okay. n, n cubic uh, because for every dp of pause, uh, because I handle everything up to this position, I iterate over position two and I move to dp of position two. This is anything greater than position. I consider this interval from P to P2. I linearly go through all red events and check if there is no contradiction. If that's so, then DP of POS means the smallest possible number of blue intervals so far. So just I say this is blue intervals so far plus one. Makes yeah. sense, yeah. Um, and then you can like trim that down to N squared pretty easily if you needed uh, to. Yes, but I guess yes. it's not really too important. Yeah, I. Later, I got here and forth, then I just moved some computations outside of a for loop because uh, still I had this and only inside after knowing if this is valid, then I iterate over the last parameter we will need in the problem. Sure, yeah. yeah. But um, we have K <laughs> and this makes we problem harder, K. both to solve it and to think about. Maybe I will explain what the input was. Uh, we have some arrows pointing to a position because every line of the input describing red events uh, actually has uh, position. Time was index. So imagine that there is one comma some position comma type zero or one. Then there at time two, there is some new position. And again, type zero or one uh, time three position comma zero or one. Only this was in the input. This is just index. And k times you can take something, one of those red lines, and you can move it to some other position. At most k times, k is given. So one of the things we were talking about earlier was that if k is equal to zero, all that really matters is the first index of a one and the last index of a zero. Yes. So if we want these things to be as like as like unconstraining as possible so they're not like gonna hurt us it makes sense for us to put the ones really late in time and the zeros really early in time if we know we're gonna move them yes in, in this previous slide what i checked is uh, max zero t let's say max t zero maximum in this interval maximum time when i knew that there is zero must be smaller than minimum uh, T1, minimum time when there was one, when our guy went through this, was in some position in that interval and saw that this is already renovated. It, and if we want to uh, make this condition true, we want this one to be big. So if something, if let's say this is here of type zero, instead of moving it here, always I will move it to the very first position. And because of that, it stops being any kind of limitation for us. Uh, and yeah, so it basically just like goes away entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, so if 
we have some t0 if some time equal to zero then it always satisfies this so actually moving this to the beginning is equ equivalent to just removing this and the same is almost almost the same is true for moving something of type one uh, right because i cannot just remove it yeah it still kind of matters because you have to cover that position eventually mm -hmm. But okay. you can move it to the end so that as long as you cover the position at any time, um, this condition will be satisfied. So there was additional condition here. Uh, I skipped this about my DP solution. It's also fine if some uh, some position isn't covered by blue. It's fine to just move from DP position to DP post plus one, uh, and then only later continue with some new blue interval. But uh, that's only if our guy never saw renovated fragment here. If there is no one on this position, then we can continue. And this way, that might be how an optimal solution looks like. Uh, so yeah, this we move this to the end. So it's more like we remove this line uh, by moving this to the end. And additionally, we still remember that this position must be hit. Yeah, exactly. And here I make my transition also to dp of position, I will just say p plus one, this is position plus one, uh, but only if, and this condition, is there any one there? Uh, okay, and now with that being done, we can move through our list of red events and just know that we can skip something with cost of one, and we can skip at most k events instead of reordering, because reordering is complicated. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. What I kind of, how I kind of thought about it is like, it's okay to have things at decimal indices. So like, if you want this two and three thing to be at the same time, you could just do it three and like 3.001. Oh, sure. Um, that way, yeah, again, you don't have to reorder anything. You can just like mm -hmm. put them to new positions. But yeah, that works too, just making everything even. You mean that it's kind of annoying if we need to change this three into two, right? Uh, because we move something down. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like okay. if you if your indices are changing, then it, there's a lot of things you have to remember in your DP, so it's hard to yeah. keep track of all of it. And generally, so instead, if you just keep everything the same and then yeah. allow for duplicate things to be at the same time, I think that made it easier for me to think about. Yeah. Just if we needed to keep track of what moves where, and it could be in to arbitrary position, not just start and end, I think this would be NP hard problem. Just thanks to observation about uh, moving. Its first observation is move only to the start or end. Second is this is basically equivalent to just skipping this event whatsoever. Like we just skip it, we don't care about it. Uh, yeah, then how did you modify your dp because you had this did you add another dimension or did you do something yeah else? i just added the dimension for k so how many things do i have left that i'm allowed to skip okay uh and did you or have cubic like space it. then what did um, you say did you have cubic space yeah i used cubic space if i needed to i could have made it quadratic space but i was just running it locally and 500 cube space seemed fine okay uh, let me compute. This is 1 to 5 times 10 to 6. And if we have int, but uh, short is enough? Yeah, short, even short is enough. If we have short, that this times megabyte, 250 megabytes. Because short takes two bytes. Uh, that's, that will fit in actually in the online judge even, not just in our computer. But in our computer, you can take 5 gigabytes and it will be fine. Yeah, yeah. It's the nice part of Hacker Cup, I guess. Yeah. Mm. But if you need to, you can get rid of the position if you're worried about the yeah. the memory. Yeah, you only, you only move, move from pos position, position to hour. post plus one, so sure. Yeah. Uh, for me, it would be impossible to remove this, but I, I don't have time uh, thanks to that. So I have position, and here, again, I add skip. Mm, and then for every next event, I can skip it with cost of one by increasing this by one. Uh, actually, I think I had n cubic times logarithm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because what I did is uh, my pseudo. Let's say this is for loop over position. For loop over position two. Uh, 
uh, or maybe first for loop over my ski how many times I skipped for position two and now uh, to check my interval that was a bit more complicated I need to know how many things I need to skip in order to make this blue interval and yeah that sounds a bit tricky yes it does the, this is something like this um, let's say things are sorted by time already then I have some sequence of zeros and ones and I am fine as long as before some event there are only zeros and after that there are ones. Uh, so I sorted those events within blue interval by time and I some, did some prefix and suffix sums here to just consider every possibility, find the best thing. And if I do it here uh, where x is, my complexity would be n times n times n. Oh, uh, for viewers I need to shift your face a little bit sorry about that um, yeah uh, it's n times n times n times now n log n to sort stuff that's n fourth times log that's too slow but fortunately this computation uh, I can move stuff around this move over there and we are good mm, just no matter how many times I already skipped I can consider this interval from position to position two, and here I have n log n, so my complexity is of n cubic log n. Mm, yeah, my solution has kind of the same problem, and that what we just discussed is currently, I think, at least end of the fourth. You might be able to make it end of the fifth. Um, so there's one more, one more important detail of my solution, which is I need to keep track of at some given position if you want its time to be set to like seven, if you want to have some range at time seven, where time seven is where you set that position to a one, then how many moves do you need to do for that? Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Because you move, uh, I, I need to scroll back up, because you have this other style of DP, and you move to position plus one, so it's more like you already know that you keep continuing blue interval at moment, let's say five. Now at this next position, maybe a lot of things happen, and uh, building blue interval at moment t equal five, it contradicts with maybe five events. You need to yeah. pre-compute the value of five. Exactly. Okay. okay. And then also, like I guess maybe one more thing that might not be super obvious is that, um, like, it's not hard to handle if you've done this sort of thing before. But like, if you haven't seen it before, it's kind of tricky. Which is, you also have to consider starting a new event of every possible time. Oh, yes. So yes. currently we have an order end transition, but that's an issue. So in order to fix that, what we can do is we can only start an event of every possible time if t is equal to like negative one, for instance. Yeah, yeah. And then um, in our transition, we can try either, OK, go to negative one. And in other words, try every possible time. Or we can say, just keep the same, keep the same mm -hmm. time that you set this to one. So that way you have a transition of two uh, and you amortize that to order n in total rather mm -hmm. than order n per yeah. thing. I We don't want to say that there was blue interval and at time five and now just with next position we start seven because then we need to iterate over time here and time after a moment. So just with this dimension t we say that uh, maybe we don't have blue interval right now and we need to denote it with some t. It can be t equal minus one or like t equal n plus one. The, that's more common and then from we can move from valid t to n plus one this will mean ending interval or from n plus one to something valid this means starting a new blue interval yeah yeah so those were the main two speed ups that i did in order to make it n cubed makes sense to me uh, do you have anything more to say about our problem um, I don't know. Yeah, I thought this was a, a pretty interesting problem. I didn't actually write it, um, but I thought it was a really cool problem. I enjoyed solving it. And from what I've heard, it seems like it was pretty popular with the people who competed, so they seemed to like it as well, which was good. Yes, generally this round three had very nice problems. Maybe A was quite boring. A is an easy problem. Uh, but it's a it was some constructive problem about creating a proper graph, but 
kind of everybody saw in within minutes how to do it and then this was b then c was something about packages and keys and doing things in proper order and then d is very complicated the i didn't solve d during the contest even tourists didn't it was really hard fortunately this wasn't necessary to advance both i and tourist we passed with abc yeah congratulations eric on making it to the facebook hacker cup finals that's quite an achievement only 25 people do that thank you so thank you i know you've you've done lots of stuff you've gone to code jam finals and you've gotten second in that and all sorts but of stuff. hacker cup seems to be easiest for me because code jam top coder open i did like i advanced maybe once or twice there but hacker cup it will be now maybe fourth time in a row uh, either oh, wow, nice either job. other order either other people don't care too much about hacker cup and they don't participate i know some such people also it might be the case about contest scoring where here it's the sum of times and then solving first problems quickly helps a lot uh, uh, if you solve if you you took five minutes to solve first problem then 10 more to solve second so at 15, and then hour more to solve the third problem. Then in code gem system, you, your time is 75. In hacker cup, it's the sum of times here, 95. And thanks to the fact that I solve first problems quickly, uh, like I'm good at hacker cup scoring because I win with people who solve easy problems in a long time, but then solve the last one uh, faster than me. Thank you for joining me again and for making the two videos again on second threads channel link in the description there is another video about code forces problem robot cleaning about some big grid and going through that check that out and maybe we'll see you again in the future if you our viewers like the content the format so thank you for watching see you again bye